So the Supreme Court has granted review to a new case, which will help to bring an end to the ATF's current overreach and their attacks on the Second Amendment. So let's talk about what's going on. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the ATF's actions against the Second Amendment need to be stopped, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to mention that we have channel merch available. We actually just got some channel merch and some sweaters in the text, history, and tradition sweaters. You can pick those up at TriStar Trading Co. along with a bunch of other products that they have like the Woobies, which I absolutely love. So again, check out TriStar Trading Co. You can check out my merch and then some of the other products that they have as well. So as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're going to be discussing an important case, which the Supreme Court just granted review to this week and will be heard along with a second case that we've talked about before on this channel, which is the Loper Bright Enterprises case. This case can help stop the ATF's pistol brace rule, their bump stock ban, their frames and receivers rule, and then also their attacks on FRTs. This new case is called Relentless Inc. versus the United States Department of Commerce. In this case, along with the Loper case, aimed to bring an end to Chevron deference. Now, like I mentioned, this case is not directly a firearms case, but it is a challenge to an executive agency's overreach, which goes beyond that agency's statutory authority. And many 2A organizations know how critical this Supreme Court decision will be, and that's why they're supporting review of these cases. Now, the facts around this case are similar to the Loper case. Relentless Inc. is a fishing company that operates in New England. The company is engaged in the herring fishing business along with other fishing businesses, so they catch other fish along with herring. Relentless Fishing is different from Loper in the fact that Relentless is a larger company. It has larger boats that often take trips out to sea about 7 to 14 days at a time. They operate a little bit different from some of the other fishing boats that maybe only go out for about 2 to 3 days. However, the herring industry in the area came under attack because the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration implemented a final rule back in 2020, which forced these fishing companies like Relentless and Loper to pay a human to be on board to serve as monitors on their ships. Not only does the monitor take up space on the boat, but the fishermen must also pay the monitor's salary, which is estimated to be around about $700 per day. This new rule harms companies like Relentless because they were required to have these monitors on board during their 17 to 14 day trips. And again, this new requirement actually resulted in some of their trips costing them more money than they made. And if these fishing boats decline to carry a monitor on board, then they're prohibited from under the rule from even being able to fish. Now, originally in the different case, the Loper case, that small company Loper and other fisheries sued and challenged the rule, arguing that this agency here lacked statutory authority to force them to pay these people to be on board. Now, on review, a district court held that the statutory text did authorize this new rule. Loper Bright then appealed and the D.C. Circuit Court held that the statute was ambiguous, but then the court deferred to the agency's interpretation under the doctrine of Chevron deference. Loper then filed a petition for a Supreme Court review. They filed a cert and the Supreme Court recently granted review to this case. And the Supreme Court set the question for review to be whether the court should overrule Chevron or at least clarify that statutory silence concerning controversial powers expressly but narrowly granted elsewhere in the statute does not constitute an ambiguity requiring deference to the agency. Now, this case of Relentless had a similar background to Loper. The rule was challenged and the rule was again upheld in the First Circuit Court of Appeals. The First Circuit Court of Appeals found that the broad, necessary, and appropriate language in the statute gave this agency the power to mandate the in-person monitors. Essentially, they just deferred to the agency's interpretation. The company then also filed for Supreme Court review, and they wanted review of that decision. And we got an order this week that the Supreme Court did grant review to this case. Now, the order of the court reads that petition granted, limited to question one, presented by the petition. The clerk is directed to establish a briefing schedule that will allow this case to be argued in tandem with Loper Bright Enterprises in the January 2024 argument session. So the Supreme Court will hear these two cases in tandem, both in January, and decide whether or not they want to overrule Chevron altogether, or at the very least, are they going to greatly limit the ability of agencies to use Chevron when a statute is maybe silent or ambiguous on an issue? Now, if you're not aware of what Chevron deference means, uh, what's at stake in this case, let me explain what's going on, because this is a big deal, not just for these cases, not just for the Second Amendment context, but it's a big deal in the legal field because scholars have debated about Chevron deference for a very long time. Chevron deference is a term coined after a Supreme Court case, which is the Chevron v. Natural Resources Defense Council case. This case established the concept of courts upholding agency interpretations of ambiguous statutes that Congress has tasked the agency with implementing. However, generally for an agency to be given Chevron deference, that agency's interpretation of an ambiguous statute must be rational or reasonable. 
So when a statute is ambiguous in some way, the agency responsible and tasked with enforcing that statute may be able to determine what Congress intended as long as their interpretation is deemed rational or reasonable. So that is the context of Chevron. Now, in contrast to Chevron deference, there are other concepts that are often used. For example, the rule of lenity indicates that when dealing with criminal statutory interpretation, a court on review is required to apply any unclear or ambiguous statute term in a way that is most favorable to the people, not that enforcement agency. So you can see how the rule of lenity is drastically different from Chevron deference. There are other concepts like the major question doctrine, which the Supreme Court recently used in the West Virginia v. EPA case, um, and they also used it recently in the student loan decision. Under the major question doctrine, the Supreme Court declared that if an agency seeks to decide an issue of major national significance, its action must be supported by clear statutory authorization. What the Supreme Court indicated in the West Virginia case and that recent student loan decision is that agencies will no longer be afforded broad Chevron deference when their actions have vast economic and political significance. Instead, the court is now establishing that if Congress wants to give an administrative agency like the ATF or the Department of Education the power to make these types of decisions, they must state that fact very clearly and expressly in the statute. And in these two new cases, it appears that the Supreme Court is taking up that very issue. They will now decide if they want to completely do away with Chevron deference or at least put serious handcuffs on its usage. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is this important for the Second Amendment context? Why is this important for the two-way cases that we talk about quite often here on this channel? Well, right now, we are seeing that the ATF and other federal agencies are being very aggressive in their rulemaking process. For example, in just the last five years, we've had the ATF through rulemaking issue their rule banning bump stocks, their attack on a force reset triggers, their attack on unfinished frames and receivers, and their new pistol brace rule, which is regulating any braced pistol as now an SBR and therefore subject to the NFA. This is all being done through the ATF claiming that they have broad statutory authority given to them under the NFA and GCA. If Chevron is completely done away with, then the ATF's claims that they have this type of authority will no longer be valid. Now, multiple Second Amendment organizations know how important these cases are, and they filed, uh, you know, multiple amicus briefs in the Loper case. You know, you've had FBC and GOA both do that, other organizations as well, and they're all asking for the Supreme Court to strike down Chevron. The main contention in those briefs is how the ATF is engaged in similar conduct by broadly interpreting the NFA and GCA to regulate items like pistol braces, bump stocks, and unfinished frames and receivers. So like I said, although these cases do not deal directly with 2A issues, it does deal with a larger major legal principle that has been used quite often in multiple 2A cases. A positive decision in this case, in these Loper cases and the Relentless case, will help all future 2A cases, especially those that are suing the ATF and other agencies who are trying to put in place rules which restrict our right to keep and bear arms. These are definitely huge cases that we'll be keeping our eyes on, and right now they're currently set to be argued in January, so that is what we have to look forward to. Of course, if anything else develops, if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Also, I want to mention that a lot of you guys have been mentioning in the comment section that you've been unsubscribed from the channel and you, you know, you've had to subscribe multiple times. Just double check your subscription because quite often YouTube will unsubscribe people. And then also, if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. That does help the channel to grow and to get these videos out to more people. And if you want to ensure that you're actually seeing these videos, make sure you click the bell icon and turn on all notifications because that's another way you can ensure that you actually get these videos when maybe YouTube won't send it to you. So regardless, thank you guys so much for all of your support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.